Hello everyone, I'm Rinal Mehta and welcome back to Marketing91.com. We provide management and marketing training to students and professionals worldwide through our courses, videos and community. This video is part of a comprehensive take on the gamut of human resource management. Let's look at the theories of pages. We'll be covering five theories. Let's start with the first one which is known as the subsistence theory. David Ricardo introduces hypothesis. In line with this view, the laborers are paid but just to manage to survive and complete the race of life. Let's understand this further. In accordance with this notion, a worker's wages are ultimately established at a level of compensation that is only high enough to cover their basic needs. The subsistence level is what we refer to this as. The fundamental principle of this theory is that whenever employees are paid wages beyond this level, their population will grow and earnings will therefore decline to the subsistence level. In contrast, if employees are paid less than the minimum wage, the number of employed individuals would decline due to starvation-related deaths, malnutrition, sickness, etc. and many individuals because of this will not even marry. So the idea is about survival. Following that, pay would increase to the subsistence level again. This idea is often referred to as the iron law of wages. Since pay rates are always likely to really be at the subsistence level, minimum wages are referred to as subsistence wages. Moving on to the next one, the wages fund theory. Adam Smith created this notion. His thesis was founded on the fundamental tenet that wages are provided to employees from a set pot of money. He referred to this amount as wages fund that had been established by saving. In accordance with Adam Smith, the quantity of labor needed and the wage rate is influenced by the volume of the wage fund. As a result, higher salaries would result from a big wage fund and vice versa. Moving on to the next, marginal productivity theory. Phillips Henry Wick Steed from England and John Bates Clark from the United States of America developed this notion. In accordance with this principle, wages are calculated depending on the contribution to productivity made by the final labor or marginal worker. The term marginal production is used to describe his or her output. Moving on to the next, residual claimant theory. Francis A. Walker responsible for the formulation of this principle. Rent from the land, interest paid to banks, Profit made from the company and wages paid to labor seem to be the four primary factors of output or commercial activity according to Walker. In his opinion, whatever is left over after accounting for the other three components that is paying the rent for the land on which you operate, interest to the bank and profit for the entrepreneur, then what is left that is wages are paid to the workers. Therefore, in accordance with this idea, the worker is the remaining contender or the residual claimant. Moving on to the final one. Bargaining Theory of Wages The most comprehensive version of this idea was proposed by John Davidson. In accordance with this theory, the negotiating power of employers and employees as well as labor unions and employers determines how wages are fixed. When negotiating power is more significant among the workforce, high pay is more common because unions would negotiate on their behalf with the employer. If the company has a larger influence, salaries are more likely to be low because the employer has an upper hand over the employees and the union. So that's it folks, this was a quick stab at the theories of wages. These are the list of sources and links referred to for our content in the video. Thank you and stay tuned for more videos.